Hi, it's Sukrit from STEM Coder, and today we're going to be finding the derivative of the sine function. We have a lot to do, so without further ado, let's get started. Over here, we have the limit definition of the derivative. The derivative with respect to x of sine of x is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of sine of x plus h minus sine of x divided by h. So we have this special trig identity over here where sine of x plus h is equal to the sine x times cos sine h plus sine h times cosine x. That's a um, trigonometric identity and we're going to apply it here to get this expression. The limit as h approaches 0 of sine of x cosine h plus sine of h times cosine x minus sine of x divided by h. So we're going to rearrange some terms a bit. I'm going to basically group this and this together. So it'll be like this. So what I have done, I've simply rearranged the terms. I've put this and this together and I factored off the sine x. And in this case, I've just uh, separated it from this statement over here. Now, you can we can split this up into two separate limit functions. So this can be limit as h goes to 0 of this plus the limit as h goes to 0 of this. And you can see we can actually factor out the sine of x and the cosine of x. Why is that? Because uh, sine of x and cosine of x do not include the term h. So they can basically be factored out of the limit as a constant. So let's go ahead and do that. So this is equal to the sine of x times the limit as h goes to 0 of cosine of h minus 1 over h plus cosine of x times the limit as h goes to 0 of sine of h over h. So you can see that we've basically come down to two limits we need to find. We need to find the limit as h goes to 0 of cosine h minus 1 over h and we need to find the limit as h goes to 0 of sine h over h and that's exactly what we're going to do right now. First we will find the limit as theta approaches 0 of sine theta over theta. I'm using theta instead of x for this proof. Over here we have a unit circle which is a circle with a radius 1 and I have these points P, C, Q and R. First we have a triangle P, C, Q which is formed by the center of the unit circle C and two points on the circumference P and Q. These three points also form a sector of the circle and a sector is basically like a piece of a pie. The sector of the circle is larger than the triangle Y because the sector also includes this small portion over here that's not part of the triangle. So the area of the triangle PCQ is smaller than the area of the sector PCQ. The area of the sector PCQ, however, is smaller than the area of the triangle PCR. This is a right triangle, by the way. Why? Because the entire sector PCQ is contained entirely within the triangle PCR. The area of the triangle PCQ is half r squared sine theta. The area of the sector PCQ is half r squared theta and the area of the triangle PCR is half r squared tan theta. Let's write out our inequality. The area of the smaller triangle is less than or equal to the area of the sector which is less than or equal to the area of the larger triangle PCR. And I'm writing tangent as sine theta divided by cosine theta here. Let's divide the entire inequality by half r squared. So we'll get sine theta is less than or equal to theta, which is less than or equal to sine theta over cosine theta. I just divided everything by half r squared. Now let's also divide everything by sine theta now. We'll get 1 is less than or equal to theta over sine theta, which is less than or equal to 1 over cosine theta. Now I'm going to take a reciprocal of all the elements of this uh, inequality. And when I do that, I'll be flipping the signs. So I'll take the reciprocal of everything. 1 is greater than or equal to sine theta over theta is greater than or equal to cosine theta. Now, when theta is equal to 0, what is cosine of theta equal to? Well, this is equal to 1 if theta equals to 0. So when theta is equal to 0, cosine theta is equal to 1, right? So effectively, we end up with 1 less than or equal to sine of theta over theta, just less than or equal to 1. And this is what happens when theta equals to 0. Well, 
sine theta over theta can only be one value. That value is one. So when theta is equal to zero, sine theta over theta has got to be greater than or equal to one and less than or equal to one. So the only possible value sine theta over theta can take on when theta is equal to zero is one. So this over here is equal to one, one. Next, we'll find this limit over here, the limit where theta goes to zero of cosine theta minus one over theta. First, we're gonna multiply this expression by one plus cosine of theta over one plus cosine of theta to get this over here, cosine squared theta minus one over theta times one plus cosine of theta. All I've done is multiply this by one plus cosine theta over one plus cosine theta. Next, we're gonna use a trigonometric identity we know that sine squared of theta plus cos squared of theta is equal to one. And rearranging terms, we get that cosine squared theta minus one is equal to negative sine squared theta. So we can substitute this cos squared theta minus one with negative sine squared theta. Now I'm going to split this into two limits. This is going to be the limit as theta goes to zero of sine theta over theta times the limit as theta goes to zero of negative sine theta over one plus cosine theta. So all I've done over here is that I've just broken this up into two things over here. If I multiply sine theta over theta by negative sine theta over one plus cosine theta, I'll get back to this expression over here. Negative sine squared theta over theta times one plus cosine theta. Now, let's actually evaluate these limits. This limit over here, we actually just found earlier and that's equal to one. And what is this limit over here? Well, we know that sine of zero is equal to, just z is just equal to zero, and one plus, we know that cosine of zero is equal to one, so this equals one times zero, which is just equal to zero. So we've seen that this limit over here, the limit as theta goes to zero of cosine theta minus one over theta, simply evaluates to zero. Now that we've solved these two limits, it's time to put everything together. This is equal to sine of x times zero, because over here, this thing is simply equal to zero, plus cosine of x times, this thing over here is just equal to one, and this just simplifies to cosine of x. So we have found that the derivative of sine x is equal to cosine of x. Simple, isn't it? We did all this work just to get from sine x to cosine of x. But this is an extremely important derivative. We'll be using it a lot in the future, so just remember, the derivative of sine x with respect to x is equal to cosine of x.